What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be checking out some PC gaming on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. This isn't cloud gaming, I'm not streaming from another PC. This is actually using an application known as WinLater. And on my channel I've got a tutorial showing you how to set up like Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. But at the time of making that video, it just wouldn't work with the Galaxy S24 Ultra because we've got the newer Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 CPU. Now, one of the big reasons I wanted to use Dex here is because we can basically turn this into a full-fledged PC. And now, with this application, we can actually run PC games on this setup. Recently on the channel, I created a couple videos showing you how to run PC games on your Android device. In those videos, we took a look at Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, Fallout 4. I'll leave some links in the description. But at the time of making those videos, I was on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 device, mainly because the application that we were using didn't support the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is exactly what we have in the Galaxy S24 Ultra. But luckily, there are some modified versions of the application we used, which is known as WinLater out there, that do support the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Now, it's still a bit early, but I'm seeing some pretty decent performance here. As you can see, we've got that Galaxy S24. And of course, you could definitely do this on the built-in screen if you wanted to. But personally, I love Dex. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know this is kind of one of my main go-tos here. Having that desktop interface on a separate screen with your phone is really nice. And now with WinLater support, we've basically got a nice little PC here. So uh, what we've got is WinLater. This is the application we originally used to run PC games on our Android phones and tablets. Again, I'll leave links for those videos in the description in case you're interested in checking it out. But the one I have here is a modified version. I've installed Fallout 4, Fallout 3, I've got Undertale, Skyrim, Far Cry, Bioshock. I was able to get Steam to boot up, but then it would constantly crash on me, so that's something I've been working on. I was really hoping that I could get Steam up and running, that way I really didn't have to use games from GOG. Now don't get me wrong, I love the DRM-free games, but having my Steam account on this system would be really awesome. And that's gonna be the main thing when it comes to running these games. You will need an installer, and I highly recommend using GOG games. You could also find what are known as repacks. But for this one here, I wanted to show you exactly what we've got going on. We'll run it. And I just wanna show you, yeah, I mean, this is really running index on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. We can go full screen with it. We can bring this back down. But as you can see, we've got a little bit of foreign language here. And this is one of the reasons that I really haven't made a video on this one just yet. That's because I'm not exactly sure what else is installed with this. Um, definitely a little hard for me to read, but I was able to navigate pretty easily by changing the locale. Unfortunately, it doesn't change everything, but this does give us access to a lot of different wine versions that we can use with this even a Proton Wine version is up and running. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at Fallout 4, which is kind of the newest game we're gonna be testing out in this video. I've also got Oblivion, Far Cry, and Bioshock Remastered. So we should be able to get into this Fallout 4 launcher. It does take a second. And there are tutorials online how to speed everything up. But with a system like this, we wanna to go to the lowest of the low settings. We're gonna to go to Advanced, turn everything down. And even when it comes to view distance, everything is kind of at zero or the lowest it can go. We'll hit play here. Give it a little while. And again, there are ways to kind of speed this up. It takes about 30 seconds for the game to start. But when it comes to games like Far Cry and Oblivion, they kind of just start right up. They are older, so it doesn't take that much. And it did take me a little while to get Fallout 4 up and running. A lot of trial and error. If you want a full tutorial using that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, let me know in the comments below. But I think if you wait a little while, it's going to be a lot easier. Like I mentioned, still a bit early. And uh, as you can see up in the top left hand corner, we do have that FPS. We're using DirectX 11 with DXVK 2.3. And I'm probably gonna swap this out because just even in this main menu area with the different version I've been testing, I was seeing a much higher frame rate here around 200 to 300 FPS. And that's not gonna convert over to gameplay right now. I don't think we're gonna see this running at 300 FPS on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. But uh, in the main menu area, we should be getting a little more. Plus, I do need to add my saves in here. After a little bit of trial and error, I've got it set up correctly now. And you can see that frame rate has jumped way up. I'm using a newer version of DXVK. And I've transferred my saves over from my PC. So now I can just go ahead and load something up here. We're not using the high resolution textures or anything like that. 720p, low settings. 
and I totally forgot that with this save I am over encumbered because I was using cheats. I do need to kind of clear my inventory out real quick. Okay, so I just dropped about 100 different items, and as you can see, I mean, we're getting real close to running this at a constant 60 FPS on the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but it's definitely not perfect. Every once in a while, I do see it drop down into the 30s, but this is about double the speed of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 that we recently tested, and that was on the Red Magic 8 Pro. And I'm really surprised by what we're seeing here, and it's still really early for that Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Uh, obviously, a lot of this stuff has come a long way, and even lower-end chips are running some of these PC games really well. But seeing this really close to that 60 mark is awesome. But again, we are at 720p low settings here. And I think with some optimizations, we could definitely get this running much better than it is right now, which, in my opinion, I could definitely play it like it is. I wanted to swap over to Game Capture real quick just to give you a better look at everything. And over here, out of that big field, you can see it does go over 60 FPS. And this little Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is really trying its hardest to get us up there. But unfortunately, without more specific optimizations for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and win later, we're going to be right under that. But I got a feeling that we could definitely see this game running at a full 60 FPS with more optimizations. The next one I have here is the original Far Cry. And take a look at that frame counter. It definitely kind of feels like it's running way faster than it says. I thought we'd be way over what Fallout 4 was running. But as you can see, I mean, we're anywhere from around 45 up to 52. But it feels a lot smoother. I mean, it feels like we're even over 60 FPS. Jack, I've been able to tie your compass in with the transceiver. This means that now I can supply you with the bearing. Here's Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and this was one of the first games I ever tested with Win Later. It seems to work on even lower end devices pretty well, but I am running into some input issues right now with the controller. From Win Later, it's stating that everything's working correctly, but my right analog stick just is kind of really messed up with this. It's hard to kind of turn the camera, and I keep running when I'm not wanting to run, jumping and things like that. So we've definitely got a couple issues here with this one. And finally, we've got Bioshock Remastered. Now, one thing you might notice here is we do have these freeze-ups going on. So, just kind of out of the blue, it'll freeze for just a second. Sometimes it lasts for about three seconds and then goes right back to what we were doing. It definitely seems like it's doing it randomly. It's not when there's a lot of effects on screen or anything like that. It's just every once in a while, we'll get that freeze. So this has definitely come a long way, and now that we're seeing these more powerful ARM chips, we're actually able to run higher-end games. I've actually seen some people running like GTA 5, but you know, I haven't been able to get Steam installed without it crashing all the time on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So uh, once I get that, I will be making another video. And by the way, I may have mentioned Skyrim. I did have it running, but now I can't get it to start back up. I can get to the main menu, but then it crashes out on me with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So I actually went back to the Red Magic 8S, which has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, seeing the same exact thing. So I'm gonna have to go back and swap out my version of Win later, but you know, if you're interested in getting this up and running on your Android phone or tablet, I'll leave some links in the description to the tutorials I created, one on running Fallout 3, the other on Fallout 4, and the Fallout 3 video really does cover New Vegas also. So if you wanna play those on your phone, you definitely can. Again, I use the DRM-free GOG games, but if you've got another method, uh, maybe even some repacks online, you can definitely try it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.